So it seems like it's becoming a trend with Hoyvers releasing really questionable 4-star characters. But in this video, I am going to give Candice a brutally honest showcase, reveal to you some unique things about her, and most importantly, I'll show you some really interesting teams you can build with her. Look, I'm not going to sugarcoat things in this video. So first of all, Candice is a support, she does not heal or restore energy, but she does offer a couple of benefits that I think are pretty unique. Now for this video, I am using Black Tassel and a full HP build that sometimes uses energy recharge sands to help manage her energy. And for now, she is constellation zero with skill and burst raised to level nine. Okay, so let me just get the most painful part out of the way. Her damage at C0 is almost non-existent. Even though both her talents scale with health, her skill, for example, deals about 10,000 damage fully charged up. It works very similar to Yunjin's, so you can either charge it up or use it when an enemy tries to hit you, which will then unleash the more powerful version. But the reason why you want this better version is solely because she generates 3 Hydro Particles instead of 2 if it's a weaker shield attack. That's basically it. Now, her burst deals about 4,200 damage initially, and then you can switch between characters up to three times, and it will again deal the same damage. So, assuming you switch all three times along with the initial hit, this comes out to about 17,000 damage. Or if combining everything, her total damage is about 27,000. So, yeah, no matter how you look at it, if you build her with a full health loadout, this is what you're getting out of her personal damage. Now, you might be asking, well, what if you give her a Hydro Goblet, Critical Rate or Damage Circlet, and maybe buff her up? I mean, sure, if you do all of this and create a ridiculous setup with my beefed out supports and weapons, she can hit for about 134,000 damage with her fully charged up and vaporized skill, which is considered to be her best damage multiplier. Now, is that realistic? Nope, but here's why I'm using HP artifacts on her. You see, her her burst actually grants 20% damage boost to elemental normal attacks. Think Ayato or Yoimiya. And on top of this, her second passive also will provide additional 0.5% boost for every thousand health she has. So in a team with Ayato, who by the way lets her activate Hydro Resonance for a 25% health increase, her health sits around 46,000, so this comes out as 23% boost from passive, which totals up to 43% when her burst is activated. And you can see for yourself when I compare the damage difference with and without Candice Burst. So by using Ayato's skill, which is treated as normal elemental attack, it increases his damage by about 38%, assuming Candice is also providing Noblesse Force at buff. I mean, that's actually pretty nice. Although this is extremely similar to Yunjin's buff. If I compare them side by side, Yunjin's damage is about 22% better than Candice. Now, this is an unfair comparison, because I have C6 Yunjin, and her C2 and C6 give a huge advantage to normal attackers. However, thing is, besides first constellation which increases Candice's burst duration, nothing else will ever help her improve normal attack damage. So in the long run, Yunjin is the better support for normal attacks. But there are exceptions, and I'll talk about this in the next segment. Finally, I left the most peculiar ability last. So her burst grants Hydro Infusion, and I wanted to see how good it is, so I went and built Hydro Zhongli. Because his attacks are fast, maybe you've seen Cryo Zhongli in the past? So in here, I am using Yunjin and Kazuha just to squeeze out the best Hydro normal attacks he can cause, and the result is... Well, it's not amazing, but it kind of works, and it slightly gets better with Candace's first constellation, which extends the Hydro Infusion duration by 3 seconds. Still, this is her biggest selling point, at least in my opinion. So let's talk about what kind of other teams I came up with, and also showcase her in the Abyss. Okay, so basically, I came up with five teams, some of which worked well, some didn't. First one was Ayato, Candice, Fischl, and Kazuha. This is basically just me trying to see how good she is for Ayato, and the result is pretty decent. Obviously, Kazuha and Fischl are putting in a ton of work here, but surprisingly, Ayato's short 6 second skill can fully utilize Candice's burst buff, and if Ayato, for example, is using Jade Cutter, it does give a slightly better attack boost thanks to Hydro Resonance. Another team I built which only utilized Candice's normal attack buff was Yoimiya, Yelan, and Zhongli. Again, Hydro Resonance improves both Yelan and Candice's damage. Obviously, it's more important for Yelan here, but the rotation is actually really simple. Although, I noticed even with two Hydro units, it was a bit hard to keep their bursts ready off cooldown, but giving Yelan and Candice Favonius weapons would solve this issue. Overall, I like this team, but obviously someone like Benny Boy or even Yunjin would be a better choice if you have them. Now, 
moving into the experimental teams, I tried Hydro Infusion in a national team where Xiangling was the driver. Honestly, it kind of functioned, but in the end, Xiangling's Hydro application, as weird as it sounds, was just not good enough to allow Pyronado to vape consistently. So then I went for Xingqiu Taser team. Now this actually felt better, because Xingqiu is already built with Hydro damage in mind, so gaining that infusion kind of improved his overall performance. And since there's also Taser goodness included with Beto, who by the way needed a ton of ER to function, I kind of think this team wasn't so bad. Finally, I also wanted to see how her infusion could help with Dendro teams. I first tried out Razor, replacing Xing Chou and team, and the sight was not pretty. So after regretting this decision, I instantly thought about Kazuha. The so-called fridge team where you freeze enemies and use bloom reactions, it actually worked pretty well here. Kazuha, utilizing the Hydro Infusion, would create new Dendro cores that would explode, and out of all Hydro Infusion variations, I probably like this the most. But yeah, I believe you can build a bunch of teams with Candace, and they'll work for the most part. However, I still want to quickly showcase her future potential with Constellations. So, real quick, her first constellation is probably going to be her most important one. It will extend her burst duration from 9 to 12 seconds, and that means longer elemental normal attack buff and longer hydro infusion. Her second constellation essentially gives her a 20% health boost after using her skill, although when I tested it, she gained about 2000 health with her regular support build, so it's basically just giving 1% extra normal attack damage increase. It's not that relevant. Everything else from C3 to C5, in my opinion, doesn't matter. Sure, she'll deal a bit more damage, and her C4 reduces her charged up skill to the same cooldown as Tap version, but I never really noticed the difference in my Abyss runs. However, here's where things get interesting. Her final constellation will now produce a blast of damage around the active character, as long as they are doing normal attacks. But Candace herself cannot trigger this ability, which is a bit of a shame if you wanted to use her as an on-field damage dealer. Now, there is a cooldown between these blasts, and it will happen a total of 4 times, and the damage is treated as burst damage. So, with this in mind, I went ahead and built 4 set Emblem Candace with the catch, just to see how good her C6 potential is. And because this Hydra application will be very slow, you can also capitalize on someone like Yoimiya to let it vape. As you can see, the first attempt I made here made me realize the explosion is pretty small even if it's AoE. So I had to stand closer and finally I saw the numbers. 23,000 vaporized hits. Not bad. Keep in mind this will only happen a total of 4 times, so assuming if most of these hits are vaporized and she utilizes her whole kit, she can now deal about 121,000 damage with C6. Honestly, it's not much, but at least you can now utilize the Emblem Force set on her since it also helps her with energy needs. I'm still not sure if this C6 improvement won't prove to be disruptive. For example, in Kazuha Fridge Team, you want to trigger Dendro Course with him, but if Candace C6 triggers it, then her EM will be used and at this point, her build is not focused around EM, so she would be essentially stealing Dendro Core explosions with her C6 from Kazuha. Again, it's a bit of a weird build, but it is something I noticed. So, what do I think about Candace? I kind of feel we're not looking at the real Candace yet, and with more Dendro units coming out in the future, it's possible her Hydro Infusion will become relevant. At this point, she's basically Yunjin, but a bit worse when it comes to Constellation Power. Although, you can use her with Ayato or Yoimiya, but it's very likely there are better options to go for, and it also depends on what characters you have. I mean, I'm not going to judge her too quickly. Hydro Infusion can be useful in some scenarios, and it is possible there's a good team out there that can utilize it well. But my biggest problem with her right now is that her burst duration is just so short. It's 9 seconds at C0. And I really hate the fact Hoyoverse purposely baits people with C1 to extend the duration by additional 3 seconds. Which, by the way, it actually matters a lot. And it's probably her best constellation. Compared to Xingqiu, his burst lasts 15 seconds, or 18 at C2. Yelan's also lasts 15 seconds. So why would they give Candace such a short duration if it's her biggest selling point? I mean, sure, she could improve normal attack damage, but it's tied to her burst duration, so I don't know. They should have given her a base 12 second duration and then baited people with C1 instead. Now, if you do decide to build her, I honestly think you should just leave her talents at level 1, since they only improve damage and the damage is, well, bad. So this way, you can still save your resources and get to have fun with Hydro Infusion. Just give her HP artifact loadout and go build some weird teams for now. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'd appreciate if you could leave a like on it and support my channel by subscribing to it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.